Hello folks, my name is Greg Delane. I'm the broker and owner of G. Delane Real Estate. I started my real estate career back in 1994. How long ago was that? These were the cell phones then. Here's how thin they are today. I developed this show because I believe that experience is the difference. My guests are experts at what they do. We come together to help make your real estate experience more pleasurable and profitable. Let's get started. Enjoy the show. Folks, welcome to Real Estate q and I'm your host, Greg Delane. Uh, today, I'm flying alone. This is a two-part show. This is the second part of another show that I did uh, about what the buying public should look for when they ask an agent to represent them to buy a property. This show, we're going to be talking about what the buying, what the selling public should look for when they are considering a office, a realtor, a broker, somebody to sell their property. So two different things, listing properties and representing people to buy a property. This is listing your property. <clears throat> I just, I just want to say that all my questions and answers aren't written in stone up on some mountain. This is my opinion. I've been doing this a little more than 20 years and I just want to share some of my information and you know if this helps it, it helps I think that people in this business or in any business that you have to uh, work with the public it's our fiduciary responsibility to inform and educate the public as much as possible because the more information you get it's easier for you to make a very conscious decision on which best way to go you're going to do what you want to do anyway but sometimes with other people's opinions that have been there before it will help you to decide which is the best decision okay this show is on what you would ask a agent to list your property questions you should ask them do we have that up on the board we should pull that up do we have it no all right let me talk a little bit more all right uh there's several questions one of them is how long have you been working full-time in residential real estate and sales very valid question how long have you been doing this here you go some questions to ask a listing agent that might work that you might work with how long have you been working full-time in the residential real estate easy question if you are going to a doctor and you need a heart transplant uh, kidney transplant whatever it is you want to make sure that you're dealing with somebody and this is not his first one <laughs> that's just listen not that they, they there are a lot of great offices and great realtors in this business and most of them are supervised or trained by people been in the business a long 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 time so uh but remember and i say this a lot to listing people thinking of putting their houses on the market or thinking people thinking about buying a house this is the real estate business this is not the real estate friendship you can find friends in this industry and you have a lot of friends in this industry but when it comes to selling something that you've paid 30 years for and this is your retirement kind and you're going to downsize and this money's going away so you can travel and be on cruises and enjoy the rest of your life you don't want to put that into the hands of somebody that doesn't know what they're doing it's real simple and most real estate agents are only as good as they're trained. 
I'm only as good as what I study and go. And that's why this is, I just finished some continuing education. Every two years, agents have to, and brokers, have to go back for continuing education. Because we're just practicing real estate. Just like a doctor, he's practicing medicine. A lawyer is practicing law. All these fields have to go back for continuing education. Can you imagine a doctor finishing being coming a doctor 30 years ago and then he doesn't go back for any more doesn't update the newest things the the new procedures and still wants to practice medicine today it's insane so we're just practicing this but the most important part is that you have to be clear and honest about what you're trying to do and if you don't know say you don't know Look it up, get the right answer. Go to your broker and find out. So that first question, how long have you been in the industry? It's important for you to know. It's important for you to know that they've done some work, that they have maybe possibly sold some properties in your area. Let's go to the list again. I want to show some of my questions. How long have you been working full time in the residential, residential real estate? Easy question for them to answer. And the next one, how many homes have you sold in my neighborhood? Now that says home, many homes, but it should say, how many homes have you sold in my neighborhood? Very, very simple question. They should be able to answer that and say, well, I sold this many. Most times they'll say, well, my office has done this many. And that's great. If you got a big office and maybe there's two other agents in that office that live in that neighborhood and really do that real estate, that might help the home seller if they say, well, you know what? I see you in church all the time or I see you over here and, and I like and your kids go to school with my grandkids and I think you, you're a nice person. But I saw this show called Real Estate Q&A with Greg Delane. And he said that this is not the real estate friendship, this is the real estate business. So I would like you to list this along with this other person I see this in your office that sells all these homes in this area. I want you to work along with her or I want you to work along with him so I can get the best bang for my buck I can in my neighborhood. I love you, but now I want you to work with this other realtor in your office that I see her signs everywhere. I'm trying to give you a chance, but I want my home sold right away. And I didn't call them, I called you. But can you, will your broker let you and her work together on this deal? Maybe that'll help you. All right, let's go back to the list. Uh, the next one, it says, how close to the initial asking price were the final sale prices of homes you sold in this area? Now, let's get back to me. That is a big one. That is a big one because coming close to your asking price, you know, it, it kind of depends on the market at the time. Uh, if it's a seller's market, you'll probably get over asking price. And it also depends on the realtor being experienced to know if your price that you're asking is a pie in the sky price. So, if, you, if you're interviewing a, a, a agent possible to list your home and you say, you know, you had that listing five blocks from here and I saw that house stay on the market for like a year, maybe a year and a half. You had the listing and it listed for six and it sold for four ninety five. dollars That's $105,000 under listed for and it was on the market that long. Why did you? Why didn't you get closer to the six? That's 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 your chance to let them know that people can list their houses for what they want. You know, I've always said, and I've spoken to many people when we go for listing appointments. I say, listen, I never paid one mortgage on your house. You can list it for what you want, but this is what will happen when you list a property one property and its price will either sell another house or another house and its price will help sell yours. So understand that the price you put on it, you can't do a pie in the sky thing. 
because, you know, sometimes people throw an outrageous price on it. And then when the realtor leaves, they sit down with a pen and pencil and they say, well, okay, I put it on like this house for six. I might not get six, but I'm going to get 550. And they start dividing up how much they're going to spend on the condo they're going to buy in Florida and what they're going to pay off and they can get a new car. They shouldn't even be thinking about that. That's just, that's, that's outrageous. And the realtor should actually list it saying, listen, if in, in, in six weeks, if it doesn't get a price, let's agree that we can reduce it to this because this is the real number that your house is going to be around. A realtor should be able to get around within, I don't know, 15% of what he thinks it will sell for. Uh, so if it's on for five, he should be in the range of 475, 465, 475 of that listed price, you know, but it's very difficult. I had a, uh, I remember early on when I was with, uh, Nick Wolf, I remember I was on floor time and, and somebody called and I wondered why I didn't get the call. And it, and then I asked Nick, I said, Nick. What is this? I thought I was supposed to get that car. He said, Greg, that was a person that worked with my father and they knew me as little Nicky and I have to list this house because if I don't list it for them, they're going to send it to another office. And I said, wait a minute, but you're Nick Wolf. You own Century 21 Wolf. What is, how is that? He said, listen, this lady knows me as little Nicky when I was a kid playing in her yard and doesn't care how big I've gotten, I have to list the property. It may perfectly good sense to me, you know? So sometimes situations happen that uh, a certain person has to represent the seller of that property. Now, let's get back to my list. I got a little off track. Let's get back to the list. What were, we're on uh, number four. May I see a portfolio of other listings you have sold? That's not a bad idea. You can certainly ask that question. Let me see your resume. Let me see what's happening because you already see what I'm doing. I'm the owner. I own this house. Let me see what you have to make me more convinced that you're the right person for this job. You know, I, I, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta sell yourself. So let me see what you have. So new agents, I'm sure the experienced agents know it, but new agents make you a nice portfolio, put something together. I don't care if it's on a flash drive and you can give it to them and say, plug this in and it is great. Or you can say, go to my website. Let me, let's go to my website real quick and I'll show you something. Here's my website, Delane Realty. Shows about us, testimonies, recent sales, contact us, search the MLS, who's my agents, and foreclosure sales I've done. You go up a little bit, it shows all the properties I've listed. All right, let's get back to the list. That, that just shows you that there's things that happen. All right, now let's get to number, let's see, may I see a portfolio? All right, we did that. How will you keep me informed about the progress of my transactions and how frequency, frequently? Okay, great question. An agent ought to be able to answer that. Uh, if my thing is, I'd rather you text me, it's fine. I'd rather you text me and email me. That's fine. I'd rather you call me every Thursday between 6 and 7.30. I'm off work. I've eaten. The kids are asleep. That is my time. And I'd rather you call me during that time. I will, whatever you've emailed me, I will be on my email. You can be on yours. We're looking at the same thing. That's fine. They have companies now that set up showing. So they will contact the, the owner and you, plus you can get feedback showing what other people think. Those are other realtors showing that property and they have something that you fill out for feedback and they can get that information. There are several different ways to keep your client and your this owner of the home informed of how to do things. You cannot list the property and then you're missing in action. You can't do that unless you have a team. If you have a team, if you got four people on your team and you share this with them when you're doing your listing presentation, that I'm all over the place and you might not hear back from me, but here's my personal cell number. If in any way possible, 
my assistant doesn't contact you, my office doesn't contact you, my uh, my my showing agent that works under me to show because we're going to be showing your property also through us. If all these people don't contact you because I'm on schedule with them for them to contact me about everything they're doing, then you can call me personally on my cell phone. Now, you got to be clear and let people know that's how you operate. Because also, you got to let the seller know, I'm going to do everything I can for you to get your home sold, but understand, I might have 25 listings. I have 25 other people that feel the same way you do about me doing the best job possible. That's why I have a team around me. This is how I work, and I'm very good at it, and my history proves that I know what I'm doing. You know, people tend to look at your history. What else do they have to judge you or see you from but what you've done in the past? And your reputation precedes you. So make sure you tell them the truth and get to it. All right, let's go to the next question. Uh... How will you keep me informed? The last question. Tell me about your fee structure. Wow. That's a big one there. Fee structure. How much is your commission? What are you charging? You know, this is... Uh, let me just say this. Everything in life is negotiable except for life. That goes for cars, shoes, houses, boats. Everything in life is negotiable except for life. When he calls you, you got to go. You can't say, listen, Lord, I'll be back. You know, I got a couple of things. I got some loose ends to tie up. Uh, you know, let me get back to when it's time to get away from here and it's time to leave this place, you got to go. Somebody else will take care of that because, you know, I, I and I don't want to get off track of what I'm doing here. But all this stuff you think you own, you're just babysitting it for a minute because somebody else is going to take care of it. Understand that you're only here on Earth for a cup of coffee. That's that's all the time you got. Keep your coffee with you. Don't set it down. Somebody's going to put a cigarette butt out in it. It's going to get cold. You're only on earth for a cup of coffee. Keep it nice and hot. Keep it with you and as sweet as possible. So negotiating fees is negotiable. It's negotiable. Say what you feel that you need to say. But now understand this homeowner that's thinking of listing with somebody you get what you pay for. Real simple. If the office that you're listing with is the top three offices in all of New York, there's a reason they got there. If this agent has award after award, they're the diamond, they have all kinds of different things. The gold, the diamond, all these companies have different stuff. The platinum agent, the 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 millionaire club and there's a reason they got there they put the work in they work hard they know what they're doing so you get what you pay for now if you say well i don't want to do this i only want to list for this amount you got to do this i want this i want that i want this i want that i want this and i only want to pay this much for it you know uh, a guy like me that's kind of semi-retired now uh don't oh did my wife don't let my wife hear me say that but a guy like me that, like I said, has been doing this for a long time. If you give me a thousand things that you think I'm going to do and you want to pay me the minimum amount of commission, I will wish you well. I will give you a good solid hug and pick up my stuff and I'll have to walk because it's not going to work out. May find one of these new brand new agents like a puppy that chases its tail around. They'll do whatever they can. They don't have no listings, never listed a house, never did that, never did that. Might be some mistakes along the way because you get what you pay for. And you pay a top producing agent for what they know. You pay them for what they know. And most things that people know are things learned through experience, training, being on, you know, there's two different kind of ways. You can, you can learn things in a book or you can learn it through experience. Uh, you, you, 
you get what you pay for. Just let me just say that you get what you pay for. Now they can be structured where they get a percentage based on how much they get, bring in, and it can be on a fluctuating, staggering commission, I guess. You know, if you can get this much, it goes up a percent. You get that much, it goes up another percent. If you get this much, it goes up to the highest level, but we'll start here. Structure it any way you want but they have to agree to it. Make sure it's in writing. You get a copy of the listing contract. Make sure you have that and make sure everybody around you are professionals. You know, make sure the, 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 the attorney that you're using is a real estate attorney. I got to tell you that by the time this airs, I'll be closed on a deal that I'm doing. And it is incredible that this attorney and I don't mention names, but I'm just saying that they decided to use an attorney that uh, is not in the real estate industry. God bless his heart, wants to do a good job. And he don't know what he's doing. He knows a little bit, but he's probably reading up the night before on what to do next. And that's just, it's hurtful to everybody involved. Get them up professionals. Just like going to a dentist, just like going to a doctor. You don't want to go to a dentist office and this guy just got his license and he's just out of school and he's painting the wall and you're his first client. No, you want to get somebody that's been in the business a while. At least I would. You might be different. You might want to give every brand new practicing doctor, practicing dentist uh, a, a start in this business and let them go first. A guy that you're getting laser eye surgery, you might want to get that guy that this is his first laser eye surgery. You might want to be first with him because you love to let new people start work on you. That's another world I'm not in there. All right. So when you when you talk about what your commission, your fee is going to be. In real estate, you pay a one-time fee. That realtor splits that fee or pays a percentage of that fee to the person bringing in the buyer, all right? You might say, well, what about if you sell it yourself? He still has to do a ton of work. He's got to verify that this buyer knows what they're doing and he, he's doing the same thing as, the, as another agent is bringing in the buyer. He's got to make sure things work out right. Get an experienced realtor, get an experienced uh, uh, attorney Get a, get, 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 some, realtors should know certain things and just believe me, you got to have experienced people around you. Now, let's go back to my website. I want to show you something. This is also, uh, and if you go to DelaneRealty.com, that's how you get to my site. Now, let's do this. Let's go to search the MLS. Let's see if that comes up. Now, here's another thing. Mr. and Mrs. Seller that's going to sell your house, sell their house, and they're looking for a realtor, go to a website and pull up the other properties that are on the market so that you can see how they look inside, how the other properties look, so you can see your competition. As I said, one house is going to sell another. All right, let's go back to the site. It's pulled up. You just go to search the MLS. I'm on that site. Let me click this. Let me see if I can get on there. Here we go. All right. Now, anybody can look for this. If you want to look for rental, multifamily, commercial, land, co-op, and you can look in all these areas. So real quick, we're going to go to, again, to Westchester County. These are all the counties you can look up. I'm going to go to uh, zip code. 10603, because that's the area I'm in, but you can put any zip code in there. I'm going to put in a price range from 300 to 600. You can go a lot higher than that, but that's just what I'm doing right there. Then you click here, and let's see what comes up. Wait a minute. Oh, I didn't click this. When you first go there, you have to click this, that you accept that you're going to be honest and not going to try to do something crazy on this site. But you click there, and there are the houses that come up. All right? Now, anybody listing or selling their house can look at a house and say, okay, it starts at the highest price. I just started at 6 so it's $5.99. It goes down to $5.39, $5.29. So let's just real quickly look at one of these houses. 
Let's go to this one. This is on for 529, 86 Seneca Avenue. All right, let's take a look and see. I might be able to pull up these pictures, but all you have to do is click on, click on this, and it'll show you the house, all right? Click on this. Come on, come on, come on. Will it work? Please work. All right, it's showing you the house. Let's see if we can see some inside pictures. It shows the yard. Let's see. Now, anybody that's getting ready to sell their house, look at your competition. Look how this looks. The floors have been done. It's a nice fireplace. It's painted and fresh. You should be able to look on here and see what your competition is so you can understand that you have to, you know, maybe spruce up the place. And this is what you talk to your realtor about. Listen, I need to do some work here. All right, let's get back off of that. I just want to show you that you can uh, go on that shot. Now, here's another thing. One house always sells another. Speak to your realtor. Ask them their opinions of things. If they need work on the house, if there's something they need done. Uh, now, most realtors been around in the business a while. They, they can walk in the house and see kind of what's not legal, what has to be done, what might need to be straightened out. Listen, if you're on your building card, if it shows that you have a full unfinished basement and that's the building card when, when you purchase that house and it's under your name now and now in the basement is full and finished with a bathroom and a little small kitchen and and you rented it or had your daughter live down there so she didn't have to go away to school and live somewhere. She was grown and didn't want you checking her at the door. So you built a separate entrance and that whole apartment downstairs. You got to get that straightened out now, period. You got to get it straightened out. You can't profit for something from years and live well with it. When it's time to sell your house, you say, oh, well, they got to buy it that way. You should have a realtor that can point things out and say, listen, we got an issue here. I don't see a third four and a half baths. This house shows it was built with two and a half baths. When you put them other two bathrooms in, did you get it done legal by a plumber? Did you follow a permit? You got to have people that ask the certain questions and explain it. Doesn't mean that the, the realtor is going to call the police and you're going to jail. Just means it's time to straighten things out. Straighten things out. You don't want to. I had a guy one time bragging me. Oh, what's wrong with that shag carpet? I said, oh, my God. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> we worked it out. He did well. He's down in Florida now. But that's because I took him to other showings. I took him around with me to see other houses. And he kind of got around to it and got done. Sometimes we live in our own world. We don't see what else is going around us. All right, listen. I think we've had a great show that went very quickly. Anything, you can always go to DelaneRealty.com. Look up my website. And remember, I said it. We're only here on Earth for a cup of coffee. Keep it by you. Keep it sweet. Don't set it down. Have it as deep and sweet as possible. I'll see you on the next show. Thank you.